Welcome to the Com Server instructional video. My name is Ken Utley, President of SIMS, and the purpose of this video is to assist in the understanding of the Com Server and how it fits into the line of products provided by SIMS. The Com Server was designed to provide a workable interface from the world of the central stations to either the dealer or central station customer through alpha pages, faxes, and emails for SIMS products such as the SIMS 2 for DOS, SIMS for Windows, and the Form Writer. If you wish your staff to be able to fax an email directly from their central station, the COM server is the product that will assist you in this operation. COM server system requirements are a stable Windows environment using Windows 98, Windows 2000, Windows XP. Minimum memory requirements for Windows 98 are 128 megabytes of RAM, while NT environments such as Windows 2000 and Windows XP will require a minimum of 256 megabytes of RAM. Other factors such as processor type and speed as well as hard disk technology will create a smoother and sometimes faster operation. COM server will work with a variety of SMTP servers and faxes. The number of faxes that may be simultaneously be sent is directly controlled by how many fax modems are installed. Now let's take the time to examine the COM server, its operations, and options. In order to do that, first I'd like to open up the setup for the COM server. Here we see the setup properties dialog. In here we have a series of tabs, the first being the Program tab. At this point we can identify the name of the person that is sending out the faxes, the company, the station identifier, whether there's a cover file required on the fax, if there's any dialing prefixes that are necessary to get to outside lines, the number of dialing attempts for each fax, and the retry, the retry wait time in seconds. You may also disable alpha paging from this place as well as click CSM compatible queue data directory for those central stations utilizing the CSM product. In addition, we can choose the queue data directory to go and find the faxes and emails. If when using a SIMS2 product, that would be the SIMS2 directory. Now let's move to the email tab. The email tab identifies the SMTP server. In this case, it's identified as our server. Outgoing mail server username, support, com server, whatever name you choose as long as that name is allowed to send out emails through your SMTP server. Email attachment options. In this particular case, we're going to automatically create an attachment if the message itself is greater than 10 kilobytes. We can also convert attachments to zip files if they're greater than 100 kilobytes. There may be lots of times where we may send large quantities of information by email to dealers and or customers, but it is not recommended to send more than 100 kilobytes without zipping it up. In some cases, we may be, sent, may be able to send files that have are greater than 1 megabyte, 2 megabytes, 3 megabytes, and they may zip down to a much smaller file. Zipping these files down will stop your servers from rejecting them because of size and stop them from being tied up for continuous and long periods of time so with one single email. Let's move on to the History tab now. Here we can choose to identify items that may go to history. For example, we can select the Write Sims to History, and then below there you'll notice what account number we're going to send all faxes to, all emails to, and all alpha pages to. You can use this to identify in a small history record what faxes were sent to what customers, emails, and so forth. This is not to say that the faxes are actually inserted in those records, but just the identification that they were sent or rejected. We can also select to put these uh, events back to the traffic display. In this particular case, 
we are saying right to SIMS2 traffic, but write the exceptions to traffic. Many central stations operate under this premise so that the operators are notified when faxes don't go through. In this particular case, they may have received a message from a customer asking them to fax something, and it is important for them to know the fax didn't go through. Sometimes we may also want to identify when they're sent through successfully. In that case, we would click the Write Auto Log to Traffic. Let's go to the fax header information now. In this particular case, faxes may contain certain informations in their headers. This is the default, but we may select from a whole list of different types of things that we want to put on the faxes header. Clicking on default will always put it back to the standard identifier as supplied by SIMS. We can choose the fax device tab. In this case, I've installed an external courier modem. I did go through the Windows detection process before I ever entered into the comm server. It's a TAPI device. It's identified as a TAPI device by itself. And we can go into test all ports. In this particular case, I only have one modem associated in this computer, but I could have had five or six. One of the modems could have been for dialing into panels that are out in the field. In that case, I wouldn't want to use that modem, but I might want to use a different modem. Remember, you can use as many modems as you want, as long as they're TAPI devices, and they're found and identified in the test all ports. Going from this place, I've added this particular modem here into my display, and I can actually go up and bring up the properties for it. It is suggested that you limit the port speed for all fax type devices to 19.2. We can now click OK and move along. At the bottom you're going to notice the fax class is set to auto detect. Most of the time that is the proper place to go. There are some modems that will work under class 1 only and they should identify themselves for the auto detection. Remember, faxing is going to be just as good as the modems uh, that you connect to them. When going out and procuring a fax modem, remember external modems require a little more effort with a cable, but they will allow you to see the lights on the front and in the case of troubleshooting purposes are much more advantageous. Sometimes, of course, though, that internal modems are less expensive. Any modem should be able to use, including wind modems. Let's move on to the log tab. In this case, we're going to create a log as all these uh, different messages are transmitted and receptions back from mail servers and so forth. This is important to help identify problems when they arise and assist SIMS personnel into helping you make your product work more smoothly. The default should be enable exception log. That just simply means a record will be kept if anything goes wrong as well as the normal logging that takes place. If SIMS personnel need extra information they're going to ask you to enable the debug log. In this case, I can click that on, click OK, and I'll add to my log a more detailed explanation of exactly what is going on. Notice on the bottom one there, the clear log file when greater than one megabyte. This is important. We don't want our logs creeping to some size that is greater than the size of our drives. And over a period of time, this can take place. While one megabyte may be not enough for you, we could easily change it to 10 megabytes by going to 9999. Uh, it's our convention that nothing greater than 10 megabytes should be required. Also notice that you can set yourself up in the comm server to automatically delete events after a certain number of days. Smaller central stations can have longer period of times and sometimes 30 days will work out just fine. Other central stations with high volumes of faxes and emails may have to lower this number. It is recommended that the number of items in a list box not exceed a thousand. This will help smoother operation of your comm server and stop it from actually dragging down the whole network in its place. Remember, it has to search through your SIMS directory, it has to search through the list box directory in order to make insertions and so and so forth. 
So I'd try to keep those below 1,000. If I wanted to make all events deleted after seven days, it is just that simple. Now we'll close out the setup properties and move on to the next phase, which is more or less the operation of the comm server. Now, since we're focusing specifically on the comm server, I've set it up so that we've already created a few faxes and a few emails, both that were sent and not sent. Before I move to that, I'd like to stop just for a second at the Tools tab. I can go back and view this comm server log simply by clicking on Tools and View the Log. In this particular case, you can see I can stretch it out and what I'm identifying here is at 12.18.03, 13.19 and 12 seconds I found a pending email and it was moved on etc etc. You can see that I write it into the dealer, I can insert it into the traffic depending on what I'm doing here. This is what we will use when trying to understand what exactly has taken place in the case of some system troubleshooting required. I'll close out this comm server log and we're going to move right on. The main tab is called the pending jobs tab. Here you'll see any job that is currently awaiting fax or awaiting email. Emails and faxes may be done simultaneously and of course emails since they're faster will move much faster up the line. We suggest that you encourage your dealers and encourage your customers to utilize emails. Emails go to the server that they choose whether it's AOL or some other type of uh, ISP while faxes require their fax machine to be turned on. There are customers that prefer to turn their fax machines off at night and that's one of the reasons we encourage the emails. If they, these emails come through as a attachment they will be dated and time stamped. Let's move on and look at faxes sent. I've moved to this list box because there was a couple of faxes that I had sent out in preparation for your video. In this case I can click on them and see whichever one it is. So I can go see what faxes have gone through and not gone through. Down at the bottom you're going to get an identification of where it went to, who was the sender, who was the recipient, the date, time and the status as well as how many pages that are involved. Now notice in this side list box up here, I can sort these lists by recipient, sender, file name, date, time, and status, as well as other functions that are identified including the printing, sending, and send all. Be very careful of the send all tab. Uh, we have had situations where customers would try to send hundreds of emails because they simply grabbed the wrong tab. Instead of sending out from here, you can go to the top and this makes it fairly obvious that this is send one email, this is send all uh, f excuse me, faxes in this particular list box. You can choose some to be deleted. You can encourage the magnifier and actually blow this up even more if you want. So I think we have a good understanding. This understanding of the list boxes applies to all list boxes identified below. Let's move down to the email sent and we're going to get a little idea here. I'm going to click on this email here. I'm going to click for the single email sent. You'll notice I can change the email address if I want to correct it or send it to someone else. If I click OK, at the bottom of the screen, every eight seconds, the comm server will look at the Sims 2 directory to pick up any pending items that are currently waiting. In this case, we can actually move back over to the pending jobs. It's already been through there faster than I can move and you'll notice it was added to the end of the list. If I had chosen to send them all, I could actually move back to the pending jobs and see how they're all picked up and they're just moved up down the line. And they'll actually in the end be moved right back to the email sent. The same holds true for all of the rest. If I wanted to print them out, I can simply go here, print, and then choose my particular printer that I want to send it out from. As in all Sims products, there are helps that are automatically associated. You can reach the, reach the tech support site, the Sims website, and all the other 
normal type things. I hope you've enjoyed this explanation of the comm server and we look forward to your comments on it. Thank you.